Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. Today, we're chatting with Liz Cho, Principal of Teaching and Learning at Korea International School in Korea. Today's Spotlight focuses on how coaches can help their school leaders understand the value and purpose of coaching from a school leader's perspective. Listen to the full podcast to hear all the steps the Korea International School team went through to build a coaching culture, from examining the research to reflecting on school-based practices to hiring the right staff and building an understanding of coaching with admin and teachers. If you're looking for strategies and approaches to better understand the power of coaching with school leaders, this episode is for you. If you enjoyed today's episode, you are going to love our new resource for instructional coaches that you can find at coachbetter.tv slash start. As requested by our listeners and viewers, we are compiling all of our coaching resources in one place just for you, and we are just getting started. So check back often for more updated content. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better. Today, Clint and I are happy to be chatting with Liz Cho. Welcome to the podcast, Liz. Thanks. Thanks for having me. We are so happy you're here. Liz, can you start us off and tell us a little bit about your education background, a little bit about you as an educator and your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Let's see. Where do I start? Um, I started my teaching career in the U.S. Um, I... um, I was an English major, and I got my um, master's in education, and I taught for five years in the Washington, D.C. area before I came abroad internationally full-time. And then um, by trade, I'm an English teacher, and I taught in the classroom for 12 years um, with... um, Wow, in between that time, I've done a lot of things. Um, I went through the Coattail program. Um, I also got another master's in administration. Um, And um, I have done uh, various things in between, um, leading my department, being a cast coordinator. Um, And when I got into administration full-time, this is my fourth year full-time as an administrator. Um, I uh, moved to um, Korea and came here as the director of curriculum the first couple of years. And now I'm at Korea International as the principal of teaching and learning. And my job is to, of course, um, align curriculum horizontally and vertically at the school at PK to 12 institution. I have about 1,200 students and also I'm in charge of teacher professional development and professional learning. So I want to like put you on the hot seat just a tiny bit longer and ask Mm -hmm. a little bit more if you were in a situation, maybe not you personally, but if you were to recommend to someone else who might not be in that right fit, but they don't have the opportunity to leave right now, or they don't have the opportunity to recruit or whatever the case may be, how, knowing that you're working so closely with that team of leaders and they are all so on the same page together, if it wasn't like that, what would you encourage the coach or the principal of teaching and learning or whoever to do yeah. to help them get on board? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess, you know, I, I would, first thing is to see if you actually, um, if they actually know the vision. So I think that's where, and I go back to, that's why coaching is really important because you can't just accuse them of not knowing, right? You have to get them to think about it. Like what, well, like, what are we going for and trying to kind of um, find common ground, right? Because again, you're finding an irrefutable point, right? And trying to get them to see that. I think that's why coaching them to see that is important. Um, And I think that's why coaching skills are important. It's not, well, you're wrong and I'm right, because it's not about me. And it's not about you, really. It's about the students and their learning. So in order for us to get there, let's really see what is the common ground that we have. Um, that's the first thing. Um, 
and I say that as if it were simple, it's not, obviously, if somebody is in a very resistant uh, mode, and they're not really um, interested in it, that's really difficult. But I think that's the first step, you have to get them to see what why you are there together, right? And you can't get out of it, you, you still have to be able to find that common ground. Um, and having the conversations that uh, building off of that is what is, um, how do we impact student learning? I think that's the biggest question because again, we have to try to take the focus off of you and me and him or her, right? But it has to be about our learners and the learning community at the school. So what are we doing that would help impact the student learning in a positive way so that they can be the best version of themselves. Um, so, yeah, I would say that you you have to try. And if that were not going to work, then that's you wait out your contract, right? That's not the place where you should be. Um, and if on the flip side, if you have teachers who are not on board with you, I firmly believe that the teachers that you have, that's still yours and your responsibility, like I don't think we should be waiting for that teacher to leave unless there's such a red lighter and they, they refuse to ever take a step forward. Um, I think that's, you know, very few and far in between where there's like complete resistance, right? There might be, but I think if we have them and we keep renewing them or if they're within our school, we absolutely have a responsibility to make them be the best version of themselves and or try. And if it doesn't work, make sure that you keep a good record of why not, right? Instead of it just being, sorry, we're not gonna offer your contract later, or it's just not right for a leader to say, I can't wait for that person to leave. That, that doesn't work either. We have to take care of our own. Um, yeah, and that just has to be, it has, has to be an ethos of a school, I think. I think the two points that you shared about encouraging coaches to help school leaders get on board, getting that common ground and then take the focus off the, the individuals in the conversation. I think yeah. those are two concrete, very strategic ways that coaches can work with their school leaders to try and see how they can move coaching forward. I think sometimes coaches get stuck in the challenge of, you were speaking earlier about how the name is ambiguous. Right. So like, yeah, I have yeah, a vision of what my sure. job is. You have a vision of what my job is. Somebody else has a vision of what my job is. And so it's hard for everybody to get onto the same page. And so I think starting yeah. the mission and then talking about student learning, and then I'm even yeah. thinking you probably could have added a third section to that, that you have already talked about. And that's the research piece and the feedback piece yeah, absolutely. at school. Mm -hmm. And I think if you mm -hmm. do those three things, you're helping, you're coaching up, like you're talking about helping your leaders yeah. understand the purpose and power of coaching from the perspective of improving learning at our school, not yeah. this is my job or you don't understand Absolutely. my job or tell me my job, right. you know, that kind mm -hmm. of right. framework. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation and there is so much more on the audio version. Don't miss subscribing to our podcast on any of your podcast subscribers under Coach Better. Mm -hmm.